Hello team, welcome to my session on Coffee with Prab and today we're going to discuss about some practice questions for CSSLP exam. In this video, I have made some self-paced questions which basically help you to think like a manager and definitely this video is very useful for your CSSLP exam preparation. My name is Prab Nair. For more information, you can refer my LinkedIn profile and if you're new to my channel, do subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss my future videos on a similar topic. So without wasting a time, let's start with the first part. Thank you. So first question, which of the following used to verify that the product has been legitimately licensed in compliance with the software and user license agreement? So question talking about which is a process, what is the process we are using by which we can able to verify whether the application is compliance with the license and all. So option A, anti-piracy validations, which is like an online check we do. Second is check with the policy. Even we check with the policy, we require some process to verify with the policy, right? Just checking with the policy will not give me the assurance. Verify through the code signing. Code signing only offer integrity and authenticity. So whenever we download the code or when we the code is delivered by vendor, they basically attach signature to that. And we basically verify the signature with the help of public key. So that is more from authenticity and integrity, not from the compliance purpose. And option D is basically called as a review the agreement. Just reviewing the agreement will not give me that kind of an assurance. Okay, because as per the license agreement, they say that you not distribute the software, but is it application delivered as per the agreement that also need to be checked. So we have a one solution which is called as an anti piracy validations. It is an online check or whenever you basically up take updates and all that the vendors will basically scan your application, look whether your application is compliance with their policies and according to that only they will accept and download the updates. So antivirus validation is basically is a very important process, very important technology that is used to check the online validation of an application. And that is why I'm going with the A. And A cover your B, C and D also. Okay. So if show, I'm sure you have noticed sometime when you're registering some applications and all that it asks for the online registrations. When you're looking for the updates, they're asking about connect with the server. So when you connect with the servers, this anti-piracy validation is basically check whether application is compliance with their license agreement. And if yes, they automatically get the requirement. They automatically approve that particular updates. So anti-piracy use from that point of view. So let's move to the next coffee shot. Thank you. Okay. So with solution, primarily address buffer overflow in the application. Buffer overflow is basically a kind of an attack where we overflow the memory. That is why we basically use the like, you know, we have a memory protection to prevent the buffer overflow. So buffer overflow is all about overflow the buffer and gain access to system. And to that we have a further access. So question talking about what is the solution we can basically use to address the buffer overflow in the application, which is a very common issue. So option A web application firewall, but problem is that web application firewall we use external to the server, which is used to block the payloads and all that. It can be effective, but not be great from a memory protection. Second is called as a ASLR. Definitely address space layout randomization uh, is actually used against the buffer overflow by attacking uh, by by randomizing the location of a different part of a program in the memory. So when we document ASLR, it moved this functions entry point around in the memory. So they are unpredictable locations. It is also a feature of a most recent OS that make it difficult for the attacker to guess the memory because we need to understand how buffer overflow happen. We look for the free memory and from there we try to execute the functions. Okay, so a ASLR allocating a random space, which is difficult for the attacker to predict. So that is why it is a very good control to prevent the buffer overflow. Third part is called as a runtime self protection. It is more about from a testing point of view. Like whenever any kind of a modification attempt, any kind of a changes happen in the application, it notify. Okay. And last is called as a data execution prevention. See DEP mark the memory region, which is allocated by the wrapper as a non executable. And it basically prevent the shell code that would be injected by the malware to be executed. That is more from a system security point of view, not from a memory protection point of view. So answer is basically B for beta. So any question talking about buffer overflow, one of the most effective control is basically ASLR. Okay, let's move to the next coffee shot. Thank you. So very good question. In which stage of agile security activity need to be reviewed? First is called initial black lock. 
if I'm doing a review only in the initial backlog, what about the rest of the backlogs? During a delivery of module, but it will be very late. Every sprint makes sense. In every sprint review, we review the security functions. Only during a deployment will be more expensive. So answer is basically C for Charlie. In every sprint, we need to do the security review. Because if you introduce the security as early and review in every phase, it can basically save cost and time. Okay. That is why I'm going with the answer C for Charlie. Let's move to the next question. You join at the organization as an application security consultant. You have discovered that every team has its own strategy, has its own strategy and function to drive the application security in the organization. Senior management is also not happy with this process. They want to make the process more uniform. Which solution will you recommend implementing the organization to address the application security management issue? So I join as a company, I join as a CISO or I join as an application security consultant in the company and I have discovered different different people are using a different different strategy. So I want a uniformity. Okay, for the security point of view and the question is finishing and terminating at the application security management. So if you go by the option A, which is called SAM, SAM is an open framework, which is basically help the organization to formulate and uh, implement a strategy for software security. Okay, that is tailored to a specific risk. And SAM basically also help to evaluate the organization existing software security practice, build the balance software security assurance, demonstrate also the concrete improvements, and also introduce a matrix. ISO 9000 is more about the quality but we also need to check about the security part, right? Third, demonstrate the concrete improvement to security assurance program, which is part of our ISO 22301. So 22301 is about BCMS and 20,000 is all about the service management only. So very close option is basically A for alpha, which is called as a software assurance maturity model. So it's a framework which company adopt by which they can able to build the application security governance in the organization. It is also used for the gap assessment. Okay, let's move to the next coffee shot. Thank you. Which technique has been regarded as an extended version of Agile was popularized by the micro learning and firm looking for a solution for a quick and frequent software delivery. The three keywords are there. Extended version of Agile. That is the first keyword and second is quick and frequent delivery. Waterfall is not a quick delivery because uh, it is a non-iterative. We receive a requirement after six months, we deliver the application. During a phase, we don't do any kind of a discussions. So A definitely removed. RAD is basically makes sense, rapid application development. But in the RAD also, we have a fixed time frame in which we need to develop and deploy the applications. There's a prone to errors and uh, there's no micro learning is happened because we receive a requirement. We have a limited time frame in which we need to launch the applications. And that is not extension of agile. Now left with B and C. Extreme programming is a detailed methodology which opposite of this principle. So only thing which is left is DevOps. In DevOps, what happened for every code module, whatever we release, we have a quality review from the operations. And whatever the gap they identify, immediately they notify. So it is an extension of agile only. That's why the answer is C, DevOps. Do let me know team, how do you find this video? I'm also planning to make more question series on C, SSLP. If you're new to my channel, do subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss my future videos on a similar topic. Thank you for watching my video. Bye. Good day.